This is the flight log from our plane. Miguel made notes about the long-term weather forecast. Warm, hot, and dry for the next three days. Highs in the low 30s, mostly clear skies with nothing but light rain expected. Based on his other entries, if Miguel had thought the chances of a severe storm were better than half, he wouldn't have flown us at all. But there was no storm predicted, let alone something serious. I didn't know the storm would hit so hard. This is all my fault. I should have listened to Jonah, thought it through. I never should have taken that dagger. I hoped no one else was hurt, no other village destroyed. I need to stop these cataclysms before it's too late. The plane landed here. My gear is in that cargo. I'll need to cut it down. Maybe a piece of scrap from the wreck. Won't be able to open that without a tool. need to find something to sharpen it.
I can use this. Still need more, though. August 9th. I am leaving this page here to assuage any mystery should the rest of this quest prove as fatal for me as it has been for my party. My name is Jack Fawcett. I set out from Cuyaba Mato Grosso on the 20th of April 1925 with my father, Percival Harrison Fawcett, and my best and longtime friend, Rally Rimmel, in search of Zed. I am the only one left. My father was lost to a pair of fierce jungle cats and rallied to blunder. I myself am worse for wear but refuse to give up. My father believed we are close to Zed and so do I. So leaving two graves behind me, I will push west still with the hope that I am not walking to my own end. Exactly what I was looking for. Just need a bit more. <laughs> Got everything I need. Should head back to camp. That should be sharp enough. <laughs> Something's still holding the supplies up. Ah, there's a second rope tethering them. Now I can get my gear back.
Why didn't I pack all my equipment together? Miss Croft? Anyone? Come in! Miguel? Where are you? Damn! In the early 19th century, this was used to measure the angle between an astronomical object and the horizon for the purposes of celestial navigation. There's an inscription here. To my son, Jack, may you never lose sight of your horizons. Cusco belongs to Hernando Pizarro, rightful representative of the Spanish crown. Diego de Almagro has been captured. Rodrigo Orgones is dead, and the rest of their heretic forces routed. We made a crossing over the mountains and appeared on the coast outside of Cusco. Orgones marched to meet us at Cachupampa, a poor choice for his cavalry. His falconets threw Gonzalo's infantry charge into disorder but the swampy ground prevented his seasoned cavaliers from true advantage. Our imperial arquebusier breached the river and unleashed hellfire on the opposition. Pizarro and Orgones led their respective cavalries, each merging to a single charging column, all of the men yelling, and met at full gallop. I had never seen such a thing. Somewhere in the chaos of battle, Orgones was shot and unhorsed and killed, they say the coward Almagro retreated from the battlefield atop an ass. Fitting. Excerpt from Alonso Luiz's journal. Careful, careful. Wonder where this will lead. Thirtieth of May. 
this morning we entered uncharted territory, leaving the sun-bleached bones of dead horse camp behind. It seems the tables have turned on Rally, almost quite literally. His bandaged leg has slowed his pace and made him the tail of our party. When Father notices, he slows, turning around to give us both an encouraging smile. His overly eager step betrays his calm demeanor as he rushes past us at the sight of every nearing turn, ridge, or embankment. May Ergu be the one to chart the path from this life to the next, so that we may all travel safely. Shit! <laughs> <clears throat> This seems to describe a hidden chamber nearby. to be the way up. Hmm. <laughs> 
Miguel? Where are you? Oh no. <sighs> Miguel? Miguel? Every part of the world seems to have its own mythical, forest-dwelling, bipedal creature. Around here, it's known as the Sisamite, the guardian of the forest. Described as large and ape-like, it's rumored to kill male humans on sight, but takes the females to its cave for mating purposes. Miguel?
coming. That's part of the wreckage. Jonah! Sixth of June. Father's outward enthusiasm is at an all-time high, though I have doubts. In the middle of the night, I have caught the whites of his eyes reflecting moonlight, his stare vacantly locked to the stars. 
Were it not for all the stories he has shared of the Amazon in the past, I would mistake his gaze as regretful, even mournful. Perhaps it is simply these insects making their way through our head nets causing him such consternation. First of August. Tonight, sleep escapes us. The jungle is angry and the moon is uncooperative. The human imagination wanders endlessly in the dark this deep. I can hear the jungle's breath ruffling behind my ears, its low growl shaking the very ground we lay on, its manic energy rustling through the trees above. Rest has become the lead on our search, finding us at the most inopportune time. I have caught father dozing off mid-step and his hand barely clutching his walking stick. We have run out of food and are sustained almost entirely by gathered berries and rainwater. The both of us are far too unyielding to give up. I fear the very stubbornness that led us to this point may also be that which leads us to our early graves. <laughs> <laughs> 